So mo for most of us, when we either watch the guys on TV or maybe we've had the good fortune to actually go see them in person. And you get to stand so close and then, you, you know, you watch, you know, Rory McIlroy steps up four feet away from you and he hits this incredible drive and he just looks so smooth and easy and divots fall in place just right. And it's what we're all chasing, right? But a lot of us feel like we're just never going to be able to hit the ball like that. Well, what if I could tell you that there was just one move that if you could emulate one move that the guys on TV, the most famous guys, you know, like Tiger and Rory and Dustin, they all do this one move. If you could learn it, emulate it, practice it, master it, you'll be able to hit the ball a lot more like them as well. So if you want to know that magic move I'm talking about, then just stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a mission to hit it longer and straighter from tee to green, be more solid, be more in control, um, hit more accurate shots, stay in the fairway more often. Because I just think that's what makes golf fun. If you want to have more fun with your game, hit a little bit longer, hit a couple more fairways, then by all means join us, hit the subscribe button, like this video if you liked it, and help the YouTube algorithm out just a little bit in my favor by leaving a comment down below. All right, so if you want, you can call this a magic move video, but really this is probably, this area of the swing is probably got the largest gap or the biggest difference between how the average golfer does it and how the great golfers do it. And it has to do with the beginning of the downswing, how the hips move, how the lower body moves. Let's take a look at a swing, a driver swing in slow mob by Rory McIlroy, one of the best to look at. What a great swing he's got. And this is going super duper slow motion, but you can really see here that the arms and the club head appear to be kind of left at the top while the hips and the turn of the chest start to work before the club is allowed to come down. In fact, it almost looks like that's the only reason the club is starting to advance is because the action in the thighs and the knees, the ankles, the torso, really the hips. What is he doing with his hips that's causing this to happen? Now let's break this action down into three parts. Number one, we have the a back action or a vector. Another one is we have a target word vector or a weight shift forward um, from the top of the swing. And then we have an around vector. And if you take all of those three together, that's what you're seeing on the screen here, a combination of those. So using my favorite folding chair here, which I'm sure you've got a patio chair, a dining room chair, some kind of folding chair at home, you can practice this at home, this missing move, and get a hell of a lot better. So probably the biggest, most common flaws that keep you from becoming a good golfer are all lying here in the pivot to start the downswing in one of these three components that I've spelled out. So let's look at the mistakes that people will make commonly. Instead of going back with the rear end, they'll go forward with the rear end, sometimes called early extension or even goat humping. Another thing that people do, and I'll turn the chair this way so you can see it, is that the average golfer simply does not get far enough this way in space in order to create enough plant force into the front foot to hit the ball for a lot of distance. Now when you're able to do those first two, the third one starts to happen almost automatically. That's the around part. So if I can keep my butt moving back, notice how I've lifted the chair in the transition as I'm stepping over. It makes my torso go around the corner quite nicely, almost automatically. At that point, you almost can't resist it. However, if I move this way and then I try to turn, I go right over my toes. So my brain is going to discourage me from doing that. All right, so let's look at the move 
all three components here. Now I recommend building this move in very specific steps. Start, first I would remove the distractions that keep you from changing the way you move your body during a swing. Get rid of the ball, get rid of the club, and I would just practice butt on the chair. I'm just going to hold my arms out like this and I'm going to first stick on the chair going back. Lift the chair by sticking the butt out, go really slow slide down the wall as I'm lifting the chair and rotate the chest back with the butt which also gives us the sense that the hip line the belt line is dropping which a lot of good players have if you go back and look at that video we showed earlier you can see that Rory's hips are certainly dropping and then rising again as he goes through the ball it's so one of the things that gives him so much power, and he's not that big of a guy. So, butt back, sliding along the chair to the left, and rotating the chest, just like this. Lift, slide, turn. We've got this vector, we've got this vector, and that's gonna make the chest and the hips rotate. It's going to give you a ton more club head speed. The next thing I would do, I've got this speed whoosh and I really like this because it's kind of light and whippy and it's going to tell me exactly where my release point is and I'll just do some soft swings where I'm going to again lift, drive down the wall and turn and then I'm going to add a swat to that. So here Lift the chair, swat forward and around to the left. Make the swat well out here, 30 or maybe even 4 feet in front of the ball, 30 inches to 4 feet, and back around to the left again. Um, I would hold the finish and then double check that I'm lifting the chair. So one more time. slightly off the ground. Now if you've got a backyard set up or you can hit foam wiffle balls, now you'd add these at home. And I'm just going to hit some soft pitch shots with a 9 iron trying to copy the same hip action. Notice I held the finish to ensure that I had the chair lifted slightly off the ground and that I had come all the way to the front edge of this chair because I had moved target words. Now keep in mind that this move that we're making with the pelvis and the hips has an absolute order to it. You're doing this first from the top of the swing. And in some cases, you might be triggering your downswing. You might have the end of your backswing, and then you go before the club reaches its top of swing position. All right, let's do one more. My butt will push back, increasing my hip flexion. I will be moving away from the camera with my left hip. In fact, I'll be driving my left hip because of the back push, I'll be driving my left hip left of the target, left of the fairway, and that will be causing my torso to really rotate like crazy. All right, so let's give it one more shot. I do these slow and easy. my hip is at at the end. Now there's no question that most of the students that I work with, they do not, they have not developed this hip action, similar to what you see in any of the top players on TV. And yet, the closer they get to it, 
the more their handicap drops, the farther they hit the ball. Now while this is something that's fairly complex because it involves so many muscles and joints and joint actions, it's going to take you a while, but believe me, the journey will be worth it because once you get this even reasonably mastered, you're gonna be hitting it longer, straighter, and you're gonna be playing a lot better golf. All right, hey, I'm gonna go back and work on my magic hip move from the top of the swing a little bit more. Uh, I hope this provided some insight on how to better practice and maybe what you should be practicing. Uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us. And as always, I'll either see you in the next video or I hope to see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.